This is what I look like when I'm not traveling. I'm reminiscing about last weekend when I visited some old friends in, I don't know how to say it, I'll let Google say it. Belleuil, Québec. We used to teach English in South Korea. I don't know if that's still a popular thing to do. Back then, no one in our expat community had direction or money, but we had a taste for travel and soccer and adventure. When I saw these old friends last weekend, they had good careers, were well off financially, and had a nice home in the suburbs. I won't give their real names. Let's just call them Jack and Diane. Jack and Diane are amazing friends. 13 years ago, we took a vacation together from Korea to China, and we went to the silk market, and Jack spent 1,300 yuan on a silk Hugh Hefner robe. We went to a soccer match, ate strange food, saw temples, and walked the Great Wall. When I arrived last Friday, it was great to see them after 13 years. I brought with me a cheap bottle of wine. We talked nonstop for an hour or two. Diane stood in the kitchen in her quiet, self-effacing manner as I remember her, occasionally asking me, want a drink? How about a Stella? Or maybe a Madri? We'll have Bailey's after dinner. How about a Boodles with Perrier and lime? I wavered, not wanting to put her out. Gin sounds nice, I said meekly, but I'll take anything. You want a gin? You're getting a gin. We're a gin house said Jack. And then Diane made me the coolest, smoothest gin drink I've ever tasted. Every 15 minutes or so, she'd say, let me know if you need a top up. Jack, I always remembered being shorter than me for some reason. When I saw him last week, after 13 years, he was taller than me. His hair had gone salt and pepper, and he had a well-earned belly. You see, Jack is a dying supernova, and he wouldn't take offense to me saying that. Jack drinks harder than any man I've ever known, like he's trying to quench a fire inside. And he's got a British accent that I'm not going to try to model, but he speaks French fluently and has traveled to over 60 countries. When he talks, he throws curveballs like, the Beatles are the best most overrated band of all time, but still the best band of all time. And oh bloody hell, get out of your comfort zone, grab your bullocks, give them a squeeze and be a hero. And he says, Andy, the measure for getting deeper into Africa is first your cell phone signal goes, then tourist shops disappear, then deep in the heart of it, you stop seeing Premier League jerseys. He's a huge Manchester United fan. Last Friday, after Jack got a few drinks in him, he put on Apple Music. We sat in his living room, him in his favorite chair and me on the sofa. Jack put on Jungle Land by Bruce Springsteen and pointed out the brilliance of the lyrics. He says that Born to Run is one of the top 100 albums of all time. He sang along to Jungle Land and Diane laughed at his voice. You have to be careful though if you crack a joke at Jack. He's still the quick-witted Englishman. The only thing that's changed is he wears more expensive eyeglasses. Jungle Land ended and Jack opened the sliding screen door and asked if I brought my swim trunks. 
and said we should go for a dip in his pool. Well, the water was 70 degrees, and I wonder why Canada even has swimming pools. But Diane told us to quit being wimps and jump in. We swam until we warmed up while Diane prepared charcuterie boards and brought us more Stella's. I was already falling behind though, but they never pressured me to drink more. Then Diane brought us towels and uncovered the lounge chairs and Jack and I talked about art and travel while we sat poolside. In Korea, our group of expat teachers would have discussions on deep intellectual topics and Jack would talk about, for example, the merits of Marxism his opinions on films or chess, and we would try to show off all of us other teachers brighter opinions, and we'd often come up short. See, when Jack gets to riffing, conversation goes for hours, and it's interesting, deep, stimulating conversation. It's like if he had a conversation with James Joyce or David Foster Wallace, and I don't mean to offer too high a compliment, but the conversation is really, really good. Anyway, I've never seen anyone make him angry with words, though he respects trying. And I've never seen anyone stump him on a topic, though again, he respects trying. But you won't ever find him on social media. You probably wouldn't notice him at a cocktail party. And while I risk our friendship by making this video about Jack and his wife, I know they understand. Have you read Bill Bryson, the travel writer? If Jack and Bill Bryson were to meet and have a discussion about the world, that would cause a cosmic shift in the intellectual universe so powerful it might cause an earthquake. I credit Jack for pointing me to Tom Waits, Nina Simone, and the Velvet Underground. For the latter, he said heroin is one of the greatest songs of all time, particularly because of the chaos of it. On Saturday, Jack and I sat poolside in the sun. He noticed my mind was elsewhere, and I told him it was because I'd met a French girl at a hostel a few days prior. Mate, the whole world knows you're always staring off into space, dreaming of frolicking through prairies with some bird or another, buying a cockapoo together, he said. Of course you fell in love with a French girl. He gave me a book and told me to keep it. The book was silly to him, but we both knew there was truth in it. In the afternoon, Jack and I went for a walk around the town. He told me about the city. You can listen here. So where are we right now? Uh, Belle Oeil, Quebec. About a um, 40 minute drive away from Montreal, in the Montérégie region of Quebec, on the Richelieu River by uh, the Mont Saint-Hilaire mountain. Very nice. So this is the Richelieu River. Yep. The church over there. Mm. Uh, so uh, that's um, on this side of the river. We have Belle, on the other side of the river. Uh, that's the town of Mont Saint Hilaire. Um, and because we're in the province of Quebec, almost every town, no matter the size, will have a church in it. Um, it's Quebec's a Catholic province and it's very religious. The church basically ran the entire province until the 60s. Uh, lots of Quebecois and actually uh, Americans um, launched an uprising against the British government. They wanted to have um, more democratic processes, they wanted more democratic rights, voting rights and so forth, similar to the Chartist movement elsewhere. Um, they were, like almost everyone else, completely plundered by the British, but it's still um, a massive part of what you see about around Belleau is the word patriot, which is patriot, um, because a huge part of the history of Belleau is the Lower Canada Rebellion of the British Colony French, the Rebellion of the Patriots in the 1830s when lots of Quebecois and actually um, Americans um, every day. I've seen a couple of people come in but I don't know, I've not been in.
This was only installed this year, it's the first year they have it. Oh yeah? Yeah. Mama, yeah, can I leave my feet inside? Uh, well, if you take this off, it's fine. When we got back home, we sat on the porch and listened to crickets and talked. Diane made hamburgers and poured me a Bailey's on ice, while Jack played Bare Naked Ladies and Nick Cave songs from his JBLs. I turned in around midnight, and they were still on the back patio drinking and talking. 20 minute drive into the forest. That's a little mini right now. We could, like, this time of year, if we had, like, a little fire pit right in the middle there, I'd, be, I'd feel okay doing a little fire. I slept better than I have in months. When I went into the kitchen the following morning, there was a tableau of empty Stella cans, Miller Tall Boys, and wine glasses on the counter. I don't know if this is how every family in the suburbs lives but I kind of liked it when it comes to drinking I can't hang with Jack and Diane I couldn't do it 13 years ago and I couldn't do it last weekend back in Korea our expat community would go out at night and Jack and Diane would stay out till 10 or 11 a.m. the next morning and only the hardened teachers could uh, hang with them as I rub sleep out of my eyes I turn to see Jack sitting in his easy chair he was up before me, watching Premier League. A uh, freshly brewed latte in his hand from their fancy espresso machine. He was bright and chipper, but I could see a slight trace of the night before on his face. Morning, bud, he said. How did you sleep? I slept like the dead, I said. I wondered if he ever sleeps. Oh no, Xerxes, you have to make that bloody shot, you bellend. He yelled at the TV. Diane came out of the bedroom in slippers and a robe. Andy, would you like a cappuccino, a latte, an espresso, um, an Americano? Just a regular coffee would be great, I said. Do you guys think you'll ever get a dog? I asked. Fuck em, said Diane. We still like to travel. Do you take milk or cream? Both, I said. I want to move in. Be our guest mate, said Jack. Set up a tent in our backyard. You can move into our pool house, suggested Diane. Do those nights back in Korea ever feel like a dream to you, I asked. They happened, said Diane, even though they felt surreal. That year had a big impact on my life, I said. You two did specifically. Your friendship found me in a dark place, a Korean pub in the furthest corner of the globe, and it taught me there were other wanderers out there like me. No one in your neighborhood knows how deep you two have gone, how much you've seen, the good and bad you carry with you, your kindness. But I know. It's been 13 years and I still may not fit in anywhere, but seeing you two here in the suburbs gives me hope. Anyway, it's a lot to ponder. Don't ponder too hard while you're driving or you'll cause an accident, said Diane. Give me a hug, mate, said Jack. And remember, you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Despite his reassurance, loneliness found me as soon as I left the driveway, and I felt 13 more years wash over me like they had already happened. It's time to plan another trip. <laughs>